All right, so we're in IPv6 world. Who are you? Tell us about yourself. Um, I'm Michael Sirkan. I'm a program manager in the transport group in networking at Microsoft. Okay. And we write the uh, networking software or the stack for the Windows operating system. Excellent. Now, I know there's a lot. You guys did a, basically a rewrite for Vista. That's what I hear, anyway. Yeah, we, we completely rewrote the stack in Vista. There's a lot of the networking stack. There's a lot of improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a lot of performance improvements. So just doing things like file transfers will work a lot better on high latency networks and so on. Okay. So a lot of things that people, they might just see things be, look faster to them in, in their day-to-day -day usage. They might see some of that. Um, in many cases, though, well, it should all be transparent to you. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to do much to, to, to see the benefits of it. Okay. Um, and the one thing we were going to talk about today was uh, specifically about IPv6. Yes. And um, IPv6 is not new. It's been around for a while. Hmm. Um, we have it in, but we shipped it in XP Service Pack 2 and in Server 2003 Service Pack 1. Huh. But it was off by default. Okay. So you have to manually go and turn on IPv6 on XP or uh, Server 2003 if you wanted. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, most of the operating system in uh, the most of the operating system components on XP and Server 2003 do not utilize IPv6. Hmm. Um, and so IPv6 is a new generation of or it's the next version of the internet protocol. The internet that everybody uses today uses the internet protocol as its method of communication, of network communication. Okay. And the version of IP that it, of the internet protocol that is used in the internet today is actually version 4. So the internet today is really based off of IPv4. Okay. And most people are familiar, many people are familiar with IPv4 addresses. Um, they they always be in a format of uh, four octets with periods in between. Okay. So you'll see like a 10.10.10.1 10 .10 10 sure. uh, kind of a thing. And, and so people are familiar with that. And, and if you do support or if you call to get help with the, uh, from your ISP or whatever, they'll often ask you to ping an address. And, they'll, and you, they want you to type in this, this IPv4 address. Mm -hmm. So the... The single biggest change with IPv6 is that the addresses are different. Okay. Um, and they're very different. They're about three, four times the size of a, of an IPv4 address, and they are alphanumeric. There's both characters and numbers in them. Hmm. So we're in a different world with addresses in IPv6, and that is actually the whole point of IPv6. The problem with IPv4 is the addressing space is limited. Sure. And we're and with the incredible growth of the internet um, and mm -hmm. of networking, uh, we've been running into address problems uh, okay. around the world. And so the industry, IPv6 is not a Microsoft thing. This is an industry standard that's evolved. The IPv6 standard is actually been around for many years. Um, I, I remember I was working <laughs> with IPv6 prototypes in 1998. Um, so it's been around wow. for a while. Well, then why doesn't anyone use it? Well, it was understood that there were issues with the address, with, with the address limitations in IPv4 a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Back in the 90s, it was understood that there were limitations with that. But the uh, industry got very creative with get ways to get around the address restrictions. And largely, they created something called NATS, Network Address Translation Devices. Hmm. Um, and so most people at home... Uh, when they have they connect their home to an internet service provider, um, these days it's very common to have a NAT as you're uh, connect, hooked up. So what okay. you would see with a NAT, so if you're hooked up to a broadband or a DSL um, internet provider at home, uh, you plug this router into the into the ISP network, and the router starts assigning IPv4 addresses to all the computers in your home. So this allows you, a NAT allows you to take a single address that's given to you from your ISP and then um, have a whole bunch of computers inside of your systems inside of your home run off of virtual addresses. So the ISP gives a single address to your router. Um, uh, 
uh, 10.10.10.1, and then your router could give a whole bunch of addresses to the systems behind it. But now, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, it's all the same address. It's all they ever see is that address that was given to the NAT. And all of the systems behind the NAT, though, they, they, when, that, as far as they're concerned, they all have unique addresses. So that is why we got a, we've gotten along so, we went for so long without having to upgrade to IPv6. Even though IPv6 has been around for a while as a, as a technology, it wasn't widely adopted. And you, you always have the, the chicken and egg problem. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, to deploy it, it would require a lot of infrastructure upgrades. And there was just a lot of reluctance from uh, service providers and everyone else to go and change all of their hardware and, and so on. But slowly but surely, IPv6 is becoming more and more of a reality. Okay. And uh, today, um, virtually all of the hardware, uh, the routers from the major, so the major hardware vendors all support IPv6. That wasn't the case years ago. Even three years ago, most of the routers from the top, you, you think of the top router hardware vendors, mm -hmm. they make internet routers and the big gateways is used. Most of them, even three years ago, there was spotty IPv6 support. Today, you, almost all of them have really great IPv6 support. Okay. So it's almost now just a feature. When you buy, go buy an enterprise router, you're almost always now going to be buying IPv6 is just a part of it. It's just another protocol that's supported in the router. So mm -hmm. we're now seeing the infrastructure is getting more widely deployed. Uh, that's that's been happening. But the biggest thing that's happening in IPv6 okay. is that we are turning on by default in Vista and Longhorn Server. Excellent. Now let's talk a little bit about what exactly that means. So I'm running Vista, mm -hmm. you're running Vista, and IPv6 is enabled by default. Right. Okay. Um, so is that what, what you're saying is that my IP address by default is going to be an IPv6? So when you um, load Vista up, when you're, you're running Vista and you go look at your IP addresses, if you write, type ipconfig, uh -huh. You will now see, not only do you have an IPv4 address, like you normally would, but you would also see it show you an IPv6 address. Excellent. So most people in Vista will actually just start noticing they've got a lot more addresses. <laughs> and some of their addresses will look very strange. They'll just see, what is that huge, long, alphanumeric thing? Yeah. Um, uh, which, by the way, people are going to have memory problems. It's going to sure. be it's much harder. It, sometimes with IPv4, you could remember what the address was. This is With IPv6, the addresses are so large okay. that I think most people, certainly myself, are, will have problems remembering them. Okay. Um, and so uh, well, another thing I'll, I'll just mention is uh, I'm just thinking of an interesting analogy of switching from IPv4 to IPv6. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost akin to switching area codes. Cities will add area codes sometimes because they run out of phone numbers and they need to have more phone numbers. But it's not pleasant. Nobody likes switching area codes, but yet it's mm -hmm. something that has to happen because otherwise they'll run out of phone numbers to give people. Exactly. And so we've been running into problems with that with, with IPv4. Now I mentioned that there's these NATs, that there are NATs with, that they get around problems with, with address crunches with IPv4, mm -hmm. but they create problems. They create problems in being able to do end-to-end -end connectivity. So if I want to access files that are on your PC at your home that are behind it when your machine is behind a NAT, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to do that because I, how do I know what address to reach your system at? Your system really has an, it doesn't have a real address. It's this NATed address that doesn't really exist. So I, don't, I can't get your phone number. I can't get your address. Mm -hmm. And the only way I can really reach your system is if your system comes and talks with me first. And, mm -hmm. and, and the routers, and your home NAT will kind of keep track of the, in these complex tables of who initiated traffic and try to relay this stuff. But it makes connectivity really difficult. So the beauty of IPv6 is that it, may, it will... It makes it possible now to have these end-to-end, peer-to-peer sessions work very nicely. Okay. 